up to you. Welcome to Jack's Reading Corner. I am Jack, and I'm going to do a review of These Are My Initial Thoughts. I just finished The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. This is my second Sarah Waters book I have read. And this one, it's kind of, um, is a, this one is a ghost story. We have our main character is Dr. Faraday. And he's this middle class, middle aged man. Um, and when his partner, Dr. Graham, is currently out of town, he is called to Hundreds Hall, a house that he has admired and loved from afar his whole since he was a little boy. And he is called to attend to one of the maids that says she is very ill. But it turns out that she's just homesick. And is a little uncomfortable at the house. At Hundreds Hall. But he convinces her otherwise. So, and he ends up forming a relationship with the family. The elderly widowed Miss Aris. I don't know if I'm saying their last name right. Aries? I'm not sure how to say their last name. Um, Caroline, who is the daughter. She's very level-headed, headstrong. Um, she's kind of... She takes care of her mother and her brother. Um, and then you have her brother Roderick, who is a war, a war veteran. He was, this is post-World War, so I think this is World, and I think it's World War II. It's post-World War II. And he forms a relationship, and even after being a soldier, Roderick had injured his leg. So Dr. Faraday offers to take care of his leg. But then things get a little weird because Roderick starts seeing things like things are moving around that shouldn't be. There is a a black a dark smudge on his seat on the ceiling of his room. He is starting to freak out and get a little scared. But of course, Doctor Far Faraday, being a logical science man of science, a doctor, you know he he tries to assure Roderick that it um, his imagination. But soon it becomes in his mind a very strong delusion on Roderick's part. And he tries to keep have Caroline, his sister, keep an eye on him. And unfortunately, that eventually leads him to be sent. His delusion is so powerful, he ends up being sent to a mental institution. And there is a subplot of Faraday's relationship with Caroline, the sister. He starts to have feeling. He starts to develop feelings for her. But of course, the problem with that is that. First, I live in a small town, so people talk. And the fact that he is middle class and she's upper class. And she's also, you know, worried about her brother and her mother. And she's, deal she's dealing with a lot. So that's all I'm going to say on the plot. So this, like with The Paying Guest, this book was so beautifully written. I love Sarah Waters' prose. And she reminds me of... Kate Morden, who is an author, historical fiction author that I really like, that writes also, who mostly writes historical mysteries that are also set, partially set in the present time as well. Um, let's see. I also was very intrigued by the characters. I was definitely very interested in them. Now, the book is written in first person narrative. So, and my thing about that is, I mean, I like reading when it comes to historical fiction, but it's still, even in historical fiction, it's still limiting because it is just, it's first person, so we're only getting that person's point of view. So, when he's not at Hundreds Hall, because he ends up spending a lot of time there, we, any stuff that happens, we have to get it second hand. Like, the author has it where they are, when he goes to visit, that they tell him about what happened the night before. Because there, there are incidents where characters, you know, where things happen, where, you know, these weird supernatural phenomenon happens. Now, my thing about books like this where it's like a may or may not be supernatural, I always want it to turn out to be supernatural. Because I don't want to, you know, if I want to read, it's like a tease. Because I'm, as someone who reads fantasy and for the long, and for the longest time I read paranormal fantasy, I mean, paranormal when I was a teen. So I want the fantasy. I love fantasy. So I want there to be a supernatural element in the story. And I'm disappointed when it turns out there's a 
perfectly logical explanations and that oh the character's just crazy and there's no real or like how as much as I love Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Sir Arthur Conan Doyle sometimes he can get an on my nerves because he's so determined not to believe in the supernatural kind of like that author you know kind of like um Harry Houdini because there was actually a show about Doyle Conan Doyle's relationship with Harry Houdini who was kind of I think by you know I think that he was kind of who inspired Sherlock Holmes but I would get frustrated with him but then I also knew that's how it was going to be so that's why I and I still want to I still want to read those books so anyway and the book what I really appreciated it was there was no like just we weren't told spelled out for us that oh no the you know, the characters are crazy and there's no supernatural element. We just had Faraday and his co-workers being not in the people thinking thinking that, like, it was never officially stated, which I appreciated. That it wasn't confirmed or denied that there was a haunting. Like, that the house was, Hundreds Hall was haunted. Now, of course, the reason why I give it four stars was that... Um, well, I'm sorry, I'm tired, so I'm trying to think of my reasoning why I get four stars. Why is that confusing? Um, oh, I remember, because there was, like I said, there wasn't anything saying that, that there was no supernatural element at all. Like, there's logical explanation. There wasn't that in there, but I feel like, and maybe I, this is not a fair criticism because it's literary fiction and it's told from the perspective of someone that wouldn't, who does not believe in that stuff, and he's not always at the house. But I was, I feel like there isn't a lot of like when I read, and maybe, and maybe I've just been spoiled like Stephen King, and on screen horror like ghost stories. But I feel like the ghost story it didn't really creep me out. I was just reading it, and I was, and I mean maybe it would creep me out more if I read it that those parts at night. But it just didn't, it wasn't powerful enough, at least for me. Like the scary stuff. So that's the only, only criticism is I wish the, the scary stuff took a more prominent part in the story. Um, oh, I ne but although I never did finish that. The reason why I don't like, I don't always like first person narrative, like I said, is because it's limited so... And I wanted to know Caroline's perspective because she was such an interesting character. Especially with the direction it took with her character. Like, I was definitely, I wanted to know what she was thinking and why she felt the way she did. Um, especially when, in the romance aspects. Because we knew how he felt about her. But I got the impression that she wasn't as in love with him as he was with her. I think she really cared about him and liked him. Especially, but I think she didn't, she wasn't in love with him. And so I wanted to know what her point of view of, like, what she was thinking. And, the, you know. Although, not that Faraday wasn't an interesting character. He was an interesting man. And I was and. But especially towards the end, he really got he got even more interesting towards the end, and you know. But you know, and now there is one part in the story that is that I feel like it might, you know, that is a little like questionable. I mean, not in a bad way, but in a not everybody like. Basically, it's a thing that. Some people might not like that it could potentially be triggering or make you upset. And that is, okay, so the family has a dog. And when they invite some friends to hang out, they have, they bring, these friends bring their little girl to come to the house and she start playing, she's playing with the dog, but then the dog bites her. And this really upsets the family. So, and, you know, of course, and... 
and of course the family is, is mad about it and they think the dog, what if the dog had rabies, they think the dog was dangerous, so family is forced to kill the dog. And Faraday, because he's kind of an outsider at this point, so he is asked to shoot the dog, to kill the dog. So that might be bothering, although that part happens off page, you, it's not like described to you or anything, like we just were told that he does it. So it's maybe it's not that bad, but if you don't like cruelty to animals, which could be construed as that, even though he was doing, he didn't want to do it, and he was only doing it because he, he had no other choice, like the family, they would come after them, the, um, the, the Iris family, and punish them for the fact that they didn't kill the dog who bit their daughter, so I have such, make, as a dog person, I'm thinking, yes, Caroline is right that the dog has to be provoked. That a dog's not just gonna bite you unless it's just a cranky, grumpy old dog. And even then, you know, the only time it will actually bite you is if you actually touch it. Like, I had cousins who had a little dachshund. She was, and she, you know, she lived for a long time, but if you would, she got pretty nasty when you tried to bite her. So, if I, I've only done it once where I tried to reach and pet her and she, she snapped at me. So it was my own fault because I chose to pet her, to reach and pet her, and I, I'm, I knew that she was, so it's like, you cannot, it's not fair to blame the animal. Of course, they're thinking, oh, my daughter, my first daughter, and how can you choose a human over an animal, and of course, they don't, like, so it's, I was definitely, like, I can kind of understand their anger, because their daughter could have been seriously, and she kind of was, because like she was, disfigured in the face because I think the dog bit her face but um I mean my sister got bit in the eye by my parents dog at the time before and this was before I was born because my sister was messing with the dog I think she's putting sunglasses on his tail and he didn't like that so it's like the only if a dog doesn't like something or you are bothering the dog then it's going to snap at you because I mean dogs originally were wolves they're in their their ancestors were wolves, so it's like the only way a dog will, unless it's just a nasty dog, and they, you know, it's made clear that Jip, this dog, is not nasty. And it would, you know, the only way there he would bite someone is if it was provoked, but of course they're not like, oh, it's our daughter, our daughter would never do that, and they spoiled that daughter. Like, she was like 10 years old or something, and she got invited to this party to stay out late, and they were gonna give her, a, they gave her a little bit of alcohol, I think, and she's bouncing off on walls, and you know sometimes kids, how kids can be, you know, at, like, she might have been a little bit younger than 10, but anyway, so it's, but of course they're not going to think that way about their precious daughter, and, which actually leads to something else, that this, the book also kind of looks at the relationship between the middle class and the upper class, and how they don't always understand each other and see things from each other's point of view, and it kind of got in the way of the relationship between Caroline and, Do and Dr. Faraday. Like their friendship and eventually romantic relationship. It kind of got between them because they don't always see it. Like they see things very differently. And there was also the fact that he didn't live in not just the whole different classes, but also the fact that he was, he thought differently and he didn't live in the house. So he had a hard time in believing in the, the idea of the house having some evil force or being haunted because he didn't experience it. Every time when he was there, this the force would not, he wouldn't be able to see it or sense it or hear it. So of course he's going to logically believe that, oh, you're just imagining things. You know, sometimes you're, it is true that your imagination can car get carried away. see what else do I want to say it's not again it's another one of those books where there's not that many chapters but the chapters are really long um but in this case I was mostly I was basically I was very engaged the whole time in the story I mean the beginning was a little slow and I remember it was one of those books that I started I had started the, the beginning a while months ago and then I just never came back to it and then one day I just decided to come back to it
that there's only like I think 15 chapters. Um, what do I have to say? Um, I'm not going to say what the ending is, but I'm looking for Sarah Waters is known for sad endings. Because <laughs> the ending was kind of sad. So, 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 because in The Paying Guest, the ending was sad, too. It was kind of bittersweet, actually. So I'm wondering, is that how Sarah Waters ends? Are all her endings sad? You know, I, I just want to know, like, are there, is there, because I know I have two more, I mean, I have three more Sarah Waters books I need to read, so I'm, I know in one of them I kind of feel like it's going to be a sad ending, but, um, or, like, the end is the beginning kind of situation where I think it starts with someone getting murdered and then basically the rest of the book is telling you how that happened what led to that, that person getting murdered. So, but, either way, I'm wondering, are her books, do they all end sad? I mean, I'll still read them, because I still enjoy it. I've enjoyed these first two. And I have almost all her books, just I need to get affin infin affinity, and then I'll have all her books. So I'm going to keep an eye out for it at the bookstore. But anyway, um, yeah, so I want to know if they're all kind of sad. I'm just curious. Anyway, so those are my thoughts on, um, on The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. So if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and go subscribe if you have not already and you are interested in my channel and watching more of my videos. And as always, I hope you are enjoying your reading, and I will talk to you all later. Alright, bye!